Vincent Monticello from Ally. So come on up, Vincent. Help me welcome him. What's up, everybody? How are you? <laughs> cool. One of my favorite things about Think Summit so far is the eclectic mix of walk-up songs that every speaker has picked. I was super excited about that. I love that song. Um, the song is Hotel Yorba. It's off the third album for the White Stripes, White Blood Cells. And um, it's regarded by experts, mostly me, as the greatest rock album of this century. It was a hot take, but I think we can come, we can come up with that. So I'm not here to talk about the White Stripes, and I'm kind of a little bit off script already. But there is a connection, right? If you know the White Stripes, you know that they are loved by their fans for an authentic expression and the way that they simply an uncomplicated approach to composition and recording. And we as brands and marketers can learn a lot from that by expressing ourselves in an authentic manner and providing simple and uncomplicated solutions for our customers to give them what they want to need. So we can, we can achieve great success with that. We, not, we might not win six Grammys like the White Stripes, but you might find yourself back on stage next year accepting a Movable Ink Award, uh, which I'm, um, that, that was, those were great examples yesterday. Um, so anyways, um, I forgot to introduce myself. Much like Jack and Meg White of the White Stripes, I'm coming to you from Detroit, Michigan. I'm Vince Monticello, and I am here on behalf of another Detroit original, Ally Financial. Today, I'll be talking to you about the journey to Ally Brand Love, how we use the principles that I'll describe to create impactful customer marketing. We'll take a look at a lot of the audience and the creative building blocks that we meld together to compose impactful and personalized campaigns. And then lastly, there wouldn't be a movable ink presentation without um, some examples. I have some examples. Spoiler, there's a scratch off in there that you're gonna wanna stick around for. I, I don't know if you've um, seen any of those this week. Okay, so building brand love. Let's get started, are we ready? Let's rock. Yeah. Cool, so this slide here, this chart, illustrates the journey to brand love. It's a little hard to see, it doesn't um, you know, project well on a PowerPoint, but you can sum it up pretty simply. Our name says it all. We are an ally to every customer that arrives at our digital doorstep. We care for and nurture them in the same way we would with someone that we truly care about, because we do. We want to be with them every step of their journey, and we want to celebrate all their accomplishments, and we're really excited about what we'll build together. So within this journey and how it relates to customer marketing, there's a little bit of a tension, right? There's a balancing act that we need to strike between what our customers need and want and what we as a company need and want. So what do our customers want? Our customers want somebody that lives up to the name of ally, a financial ally every step of their financial journey. And what do we want? It's a little sim more simpler. Um, we want to grow our business. We want to create um, mul more multi-line of business customers, increasing engagement and conversion along the way. So throughout these steps, that tension and that balancing act is something that we need to live up to. We can't always be selling. We need to nurture our customers along throughout the process. So that's actually a little conceptual and it's uh, admittedly and it's a little hard to understand. So we need something concrete, um, a goal or you know, a North Star to help us get there. Um, and here it is, build data-driven targeted communications that increase relevancy, engagement, and ultimately drive more conversions. Pretty similar variations on a theme to what you've, what you've heard um, all week. So we wanna go from this homogenized approach on the left, utilizing all of our building blocks to create this more uh, personalized journey on the right. And to achieve brand love, that's absolutely necessary. So how do we do it? Uh, we need to start with our building blocks. Audience building blocks and creative, those are obviously linked and go um, hand in hand. Some of this is a little rudimentary, 
but um, you probably wouldn't have made it to your seat today if you didn't know what a lot of these things are. But um, audience building blocks, let's start with that. We have first and third party data, behavioral signals, customer providing it. It's more like a zero party data thing, but I'll explain it. So let me break it down a little bit. First party data are basic things like name and address, location, maybe some previous purchases or transactions. Um, these can help us provide basic segmentation, but if you're anything like me and your business is anything like ours, you quickly realize that there's a lot that we don't know about our customers that would help us if we knew that. Um, so in those cases, obviously, we're appending our first party data with additional third party variables from trusted data partners. Um, one small example there is for home loans, for instance, we realize that we don't really have any line of sight into our auto customers or our deposit customers relationship with their home. So by appending county deed records with um, a trusted partner, we're able to create more powerful segments like first time home buyer, cash out refinance, home equity, those type of things, or even something like life insurance. Behavioral signals, I, um, I broke these out separately because these center around a specific action that a customer is taking that gives you a pretty good likelihood that they're in the market for you know, whatever you're selling. Obviously, these are things like site abandon or cart abandon campaigns in the retail environment, um, but they can be first or third party. And there's some pretty interesting ways that we use behavioral signals that you'll see a little bit later on in the presentation. Next thing here, customer provided. Like I said, basically zero party data. These are things that a customer is specifically and willingly telling us about their preferences or appetites for particular products. So if we layer these things and meld them together when appropriate, we'll have the tools that we need, building blocks, to create uh, a, gr a great audience. Uh, creative building blocks. Again, here we see data. We talked a lot about it on the last side. But we've seen so many great examples this week of interesting ways that people are using data to personalize campaigns and um, really to create you know, targeted marketing or personalization. It's really kind of table stakes to have it. So think about ways that you can render data in a visually appealing way to create a better experience for your customers. And then we have content and tools. Um, any good content strategy has a variety of different content types. And this kind of goes back to the tension that I was talking about previously. We can't always be selling. We need to have content and tools, things like financial calculators. We need to position those along the journey with our customers to make sure that we are giving them what they want and need so we can ultimately get what we want and need. And all of these two, every article that's read, every email that's clicked or calculator that's used are all little breadcrumbs that are left behind that we can use to create a better audience. And lastly, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this because we could talk about this for 30 minutes. In, uh, in itself, but uh, you know, A-B testing strategy or multivariant when appropriate, um, we always have to have this test and learn mentality. Um, all of this together creates an impactful strategy, copy and design, which really can't be understated. Us as customer marketers have the ability to generate millions of impressions with the click of a button to our most engaged and important audience, our customers. So we need to think about the creative that we develop and the messaging that we write the same way that we would about any other channel that we're doing marketing for. So I, we hear the expression all the time, it's just an email. We gotta kind of move away from that and try to elevate our brand through the communications that we're putting in our customers' inbox. Okay, so those are our building blocks. Like I said, pretty basic. Uh, they're all together, and when we meld them all together, it gives us the opportunity to create uh, the right audience with the right message at the right time. Um, and now, I mean, now that we got our audience, we got our creative, we're gonna just take a look at some examples here. Cool, so this is the first case study that I have here. Uh, we want it to deliver personalized and timely outreach to our existing customers that has recently applied for home financing with another lender. So this is, if you're in the financial services industry, this is pretty basic. This is um, you know, a credit trigger uh, campaign. And this information is delivered to us in near real time. We leverage the Movable Link API 
or our API and the Movable Links technology to show real-time pricing to customers based on their location. And this can be infinitely customized based on location, loan value, credit score, the type of house that you're looking for. This is an idea that I got from, I believe it was Spirit Airlines maybe two years ago um, to do the same thing. And we saw a very similar example from United Airlines a few um, yesterday as well where they're pulling in dynamic pricing. The thing about mortgage rates, if you know, they change quite often, a lot of times with, even within a day. So to do this, it would not be possible without movable ink, or it would be incredibly cumbersome. Um, so that's, how, that's, how, that's what we do here. So to break this down from the building blocks, we're using first party data, name and address, to monitor our customers with a third party. That third party is giving us a real time behavioral signal, sending it back to us with additional third party variables appended that allow us to segment our audience effectively. And we've tested this, obviously, it's 25% lift in response rate versus more of like a teaser rate, which you would typically see in financial services versus this uh, customized approach. Let's go to the next one here. Cool, this is a scratch off I was uh, waiting on. Let's just let it play and then, we'll, and then I'll talk about it. This is obviously an old example because uh, mortgage rates are like twice, twice this. <laughs> but it's uh, still a good example. Um, this is pretty cool because we're taking a lot of what we did in that first chart using the API and we're kind of melding it with this scratch off capability, uh, which had tremendous um, response, L literally 100% more than just sending someone a standard you know, rate and term refi offer in a, in a um, email. Um, the great thing about this, like I said, these are customized, so we're understanding our customers. We know what their mortgage rate is. We know about what their credit is like. We know how much their house is worth, how much it would potentially appraise for, and what rate we could offer them. So this is actually going to be the offer that we would give. Cool. This is one of my favorite examples here of visualizing data to drive engagement. So we wanted to develop a cadence of quarterly housing market trends to drive curiosity amongst our customers. You see this chart here that we created, and you'll see it again when we scroll back up. But this is a really good use case for Movable Link because it shows the dynamic nature of the chart. It's really not hard to put um, dynamic information in an email. It's not, but to render it visually is something that you need to leverage Movable Link for. The other thing I like about this example is this is delivered via you know, just a flat CSV file. So if you're just starting out and you need, you're kind of intimidated by all of the integrations that it'll require from your technology team, these are simple ways that you can deliver the data that you need to start somewhere. Cool. This one is collecting zero party data. So this is how an example of how we collect some of that customer provided information. Um, right here, this is pretty creative. Do you have life insurance? You kind of telegraph that one a little bit, I guess. Um, but the point here was to understand where our customers were with their relationship with life insurance so we could put them in the appropriate place. So any vote that they had would route them to the website that had the appropriate content based on that step. So if you selected whole life insurance, you would perhaps be delivered to an article or a piece of content on our site that talks about the difference between whole and term life insurance. The other thing about this that I really like is, obviously we can create campaigns based on these responses, like more of a journey, but it's also kind of a, an interesting piece of primary research for ourselves to understand at an aggregate level where our customers are in the relationship with the product. So I love that example. Cool, this is one that I'm really happy we did. We have a lot of moments along that journey that I was describing where we're celebrating things that we, milestones for our customers, could be reaching your savings bucket goal or it could be your birthday or your um, customer tenure milestone. This is an example of a birthday 
and we use the live polling feature to underpin our brand values, which is super important to us. Engagement is obviously, you can see this is through the, through the roof. Okay. Well, I'm doing pretty good on time. I might get, get you guys out here so you can jump the line for lunch. Um, so putting it all together, you know, just kind of finish this off, to have three things here. One, evaluate your audience building blocks to create meaningful segments. So understand what first party data you have, realize what third party data you could get to create more powerful segments, look and see like what behaviors indicate the biggest likelihood of purchase and create audiences and campaigns surrounding those. Second here, utilize data and tools to create compelling and engaging content. It's kind of what we're all here for. And then lastly, evaluate campaign performance and engagements to create that feedback loop. So things like respond, response from those polls that I was saying or any interaction with content in our emails. So kind of be funneling back into our data environment so we can build um, stronger segments. That's all I have for you today from a content perspective. Before I wrap up, I did want to thank everyone on our team. Obviously, I'm just the messenger up here. I get the opportunity to talk with you all, but really all of this is done by a tremendous team of customer marketers um, in our business centers in Charlotte, in Detroit, and beyond. And the last thing I want to say is a special thanks to our agency partners who help all this um, work. And that's, of course, RGA, which some of these guys are here. Uh, so that's good. Um, and then lastly, I want to thank Movable Link, and I want to thank you guys too. So um, thanks. Thank you.